Hello, my beautiful friends. It is another day in this space blob life where we ask some deep questions, we explore ourselves. I'm so happy to be sitting down here to chat with you all today and talk about a full moon that means a lot to me actually and has gotten me very excited and intrigued about the coming couple of weeks as we work through some of these energetics. This Leo full moon on February 5th is just feeling so important, so profound and very helpful. Uh, And I will say that this is a full moon that is going to be very honest, very communicative, very forthright, and really showing us how we've grown and changed over the last few years. It's going to be very helpful for a lot of us and getting perspective and clicking into who we're becoming. So I'm very excited about that. And this is our final full moon Leo full moon while we have Saturn in Aquarius. Uh, Saturn has been in Aquarius for about three years since March 2020. We've been working with this energy. And so I feel like this is also an important full moon for kind of incorporating all of that wisdom and understanding where we're headed next within that. And I just did a video about incorporating the Saturn in Aquarius these last three years and how to work with that. So if you're interested in exploring that, you can check that out. But let's focus on this Leo full moon. What is it all about? How do we work with this? How do we feel through this? Um, Like I mentioned, this is happening on February 5th. And it's lighting up the Leo Aquarius axis. axis. Um, An axis that I have a lot of deep love for as a Leo sun and as somebody who admires and loves Aquarian energy so much. We have the sun at 16 degrees of Aquarius and we have the moon at 16 degrees of Leo. And this axis is all about how we show up in this world to become ourselves. Um, Both Aquarius and Leo are really focused on how we do that, both by becoming a part of the whole, becoming a part of our communities and how we connect with other people, as well as how we find our own unique way of being in the world. And Leo energy is, you know, it's centered with the heart It's represented by the heart, but also leadership and taking our seat at the table of life and finding pride and joy in existing. And I think that kind of bold energy is so important right now at the end of a very profound three years that I think a lot of us found challenging and heartbreaking and confusing and life-changing. Um, I think getting back to sometimes that core basic of just feeling some joy and pride in our own existence is, it almost feels like we're not allowed to do that sometimes in this world, right? Like it will be a little too arrogant. It'll be a little too space-taking. It'll be, it'll suck the oxygen out of the room. We're going to use up all our resources. We're not going to be ecologically friendly if we are taking our seat at the table of life. But I think it's really the opposite, you know, because this isn't about our ego. This isn't about like having power over other people. This isn't about sucking up resources (laughs) and breathing all the oxygen in the room, having some pride and some dignity and some presence in our own lives is actually very healing. We're not going to need to take in so much all the time and consume so much if we're feeling really connected with our heart center and if we're feeling really connected with who we truly are. In fact, we'll probably be a lot less likely to you know need to consume so much if we're feeling really connected with ourselves. We're gonna be less we're gonna be more likely to invest in our relationships, invest in our communities if we feel that we have we have this deep knowing that we're allowed to be here. And we have this deep knowing that we're allowed to take our seat at a table and bring our ideas and our creativity and our joy to life. And so this full moon is really going to challenge us to think about if we let ourselves take that seat at our own table in our own lives or not, and to kind of explore our relationship to that conversation that we've been having over the last few years and where we are now with it. And the important aspect that's going to be going on while we have this full moon in Leo is going to be a square with our good old friend Uranus over in Taurus. So uh, Aquarius, Leo, and Uranus, they're going to be making these squares together with the sun 
moon and Uranus, it's a really interesting conversation. And I know, (laughs) I know for a fact that often you will see if there's a square like this going on, a lot of dramatic talk about how it's going to be tense or it's going to be harsh or any of that. But for me, this square is so helpful, you know, because Uranus over there in Taurus, this is all about how change is our friend, how change can allow us to have a deep root system, can allow us to have a deep knowing of ourselves, and that it's actually our ally. It's our deepest ally in building deep and meaningful things. But this full moon squaring Uranus is really interesting to me because kind of building off this idea of taking your seat at the table, right? Amplifying that Leonine pride and joy and boldness and juiciness and vibrancy that that archetype really represents. Um, This square is an acknowledgement of something. It's a moment to sit down and be really honest if, if we've let ourselves be fully vibrant and present. And I know life can be very confusing. It is a complex world we live in with a ton of nuance and unknowns and gray areas and all sorts of things like that. And it's not always a season of life where we feel like being vibrant and taking our seat at the table. And I honor that, believe me. And I felt not like that so many times this last three years. In fact, I have just more than anything, actually, the last three years, I have just wanted to curl up and be invisible. And I've really been fighting with myself about that. Um, Just being here and being present, being seen in the world. And been doing a lot of my own grieving and going through very interesting and intense things in my family life and all of that. Um, So I get that. But this full moon is really about where we and the square with Uranus specifically. It's looking at where we cut ourselves off from our boldness, our vitality, and our ability to take that seat in our own lives, to take that space in our own lives. I don't really like the word, I don't like the phrase taking space, because for me, it's about an emanation. It's an emanation that we give to the world, right? And that is more of the feeling. But this is a moment to decide are we going to show up there? And it's also this square, I think, is a really great moment to notice where we have been cutting ourselves off from our intuitive knowledge, from our knowing of what we need to do, what we want to do. And I think it's also a really great square and a really great conversation. You know, if you've been making decisions in your life, you've been deciding to cut back on something or to invest more in something, whether that be time, energy, resources of any kind, you might make the decision and then feel like you're not allowed to stand in that decision, right? Like we cut ourselves off from our self-knowing, we cut ourselves off from our boldness and knowing that that was the right thing for us. This full moon and the square with Uranus is really going to challenge us to be like, no, I I made that choice and I made that choice for a very good reason. And it was a valid choice and I'm valid in those shifts, those change, those needs, those little decisions throughout my week. I'm valid in my knowing where I need to make choices or where I need to uh, decide something for myself. This is also a really wonderful time to just start to decide to trust that more and start to decide to trust our process more. And I do think that sometimes these kind of full moon events, uh, events, so dramatic, um, these full moons that are very clear with us like this can be so helpful because it's like sometimes we just need that moment to just decide, you know what? I'm ready to trust my intuition. I'm ready to sit down at the table of my life. I'm ready to feel some of that vibrancy. Um, And it makes me think of a poem that has been quoted in the world, I feel like many times, but I come back to a section of it that really for me represents this full moon. And it's by Jack Gilbert. It's called A Brief for the Defense. Um, And One part of it goes like this. We must risk delight. We can do without pleasure, but not delight, not enjoyment. We must have the stubbornness to accept our gladness in the ruthless furnace of this world. 
It gives me goosebumps reading that. That to me is really the essence of this full moon in Leo. And it is, it's just this stubborn, ruthless, I am going to be here. I'm going to be alive. And I'm going to trust myself in that. And choosing that voice over the the voices that, you know, build up over some of these strenuous years of like, oh, that's too much. I'm too much. I'm asking too much. I probably can't trust myself. I need to make myself smaller. I need to get out of the way. I need to feel bad about existing. This full moon really flies in the face of all of that. And is like, are you going to decide to be here? We want you to be here. So let's decide to do that. Decide to trust our choices. Decide to trust our intuition. Decide to trust that we're allowed to be here. Decide to trust that we have creative vision. Decide to trust that we can show up in this life. Decide to trust that we have something to contribute that can maybe help heal this world. That to decide that we're allowed to live in a peaceful day as well. You know, it doesn't always have to be about career ambitions or saving the world ambitions. It can also just be, I decide that it's okay for me to have a peaceful day here in this world. And I'm going to decide that that is okay any given day. And I'm going to show up with that intention. So whatever it is, it's coming up for some of us. It might be those big, bold things. We might have big, bold, visionary things of where we want to be and what we want to do in this life. And some of us maybe need more tender medicine that has to do with the boldness to allow ourselves to have peace in our day, the boldness to allow ourselves to just be here, existing here. Um, One last thing before we get into the cards, we also have in the background of this full moon in Leo, we have Mars at 11 degrees of Gemini, um, squaring Venus at 12 degrees of Pisces. This kind of mirrors what I was just saying with the square, with the full moon and Uranus. Um, you know, Venus and Mars, the lover, the cosmic lovers squaring here. It's another moment. Squares for me are just these wonderful moments to sit down and just really reckon with ourselves and decide, you know, do we want to keep doing that pattern? Do we want to keep cutting ourselves off or feeling bad every time we use our intuition or every time we feel like we want to be a little bit bolder or are we going to just own it? Um, and that's really the character of this full moon. It's like here, here, either this or this. And um, we're going to be just kind of sitting with that. And it's okay. I think the thing too, with this full moon, I just want to say before we move forward and the talk here, if you have been, you know, cutting yourself off from your intuition or second guessing yourself or not feeling very bold or not feeling like you want to take that seat at the table or wanting to make yourself small, which like I mentioned, I've been grappling with that a lot the last couple three years. Um, that's fine. Like we don't need to go into like, oh, I've been messing up. I needed to be bold. I needed to be vibrant. And also being bold and vibrant is very personal. It doesn't need to be you getting up on a table and screaming at everybody. (laughs) You know what I mean? Being bold and vibrant can be very peaceful. I think that calm centered energy is one of the most magnetic things in the world. And it's a very, it's rare in our world, but it's so powerful, so potent. So being bold and vibrant doesn't look the same for everybody, but we don't need to beat ourselves up if we haven't been feeling in our power, if we haven't been feeling that kind of leonine pride in ourselves, whatever. That's fine. It's fine to have seasons where we don't feel that. That is not what's up here for debate or judgment or criticism. What is coming in for this full moon is, are we going to, how are we going to choose now? Are we going to let ourselves choose that vibrancy now? Um, yeah, this full moon is not interested in judging the past. Let's just say, all right, I am going to start shuffling these cards and see what wants to come out. (sighs) Seven of pentacles, just as I said, not judging the past, but this is a really on point card. Let's pull one more to go with that. Oh, two cards wanted to come out. We have (laughs) King of Cups and Justice. All right. A lot of wise energy here. A lot of very centered energy going on in this reading. So Seven of Pentacles. I can't think of a better card (laughs) to go with this Leo full moon because 
this seven, you know, sevens and tarot are all about a moment of reckoning and reflection and connection. It's often about leveling up, but taking that moment first. And the seven of pentacles is that interesting point between, okay, here's all the work we've done. Here's all the things we've amassed, all the things we've been tending to over time. And let's also be real here with this full moon. Not only are we going to be thinking about where we maybe cut ourselves off or where we felt frustrated or where we felt out of tune with our intuition or any of those, I think it's also a good moment to recognize what we have built, what we have moved through, what we have tended to, what seeds have been planted and grown. So this is a moment of kind of looking back, but the key with the seven of pentacles when we're working with it is what from looking back do we want to take with us? Do we want to carry everything with us or not? Do we want to keep tending every single one of those seeds or not? Which seeds do we want to take with us? This is such a wonderful moment of pause with what wisdom we want to take with us into the next cycle and what is okay to put down, what is okay to stop tending. And for each of us, that's going to be a different thing. Now, it's interesting that this was followed up by two cards, I think that represent two very different ways of knowing. Because we have the King of Cups, this is intuitive knowing. And I really love this for this Leo full moon, because I know we all like to think about Leo as like, you know, wearing leopard prints, being loud, taking up all the space and, you know, like as a person. But Leo energy in its core and its essence is heart centered, calm energy. And it's very intuitive and it's very knowing. So even though it's a fire sign, it's very much about getting still enough to hear the fire and the desire in our hearts. And the King of Cups really represents that type of intuitive knowing. It's not about the linear how, why, what (laughs) path so much as it is about a deep knowing we have and getting still enough to hear it without even necessarily always understanding exactly what that is. There's a reminder here to get still enough to hear. But we're also here followed up with justice, which is much more a linear clarity Um, and much more almost like you can tap it into the real world very quickly here. You know, justice is going to be a clarity about what path we want to choose, how we want to treat ourselves, how we want to connect with ourselves, what creative pursuits and ideas and energetics we want to be using as we move forward. And there being a very deep clarity here about what path we choose and how we choose it. And all three of these for me, it's just taking the sacred moment to decide and to feel the decision too, because I don't think this is going to be a pros and cons kind of list decision full moon. It's going to be much more getting still enough hearing ourselves, hearing that roar from our heart center, and then knowing, then deciding, and the decision almost flowing through us and blooming from within. I feel so refreshed, like ever since I've been kind of playing with this full moon and feeling through it and preparing to chat with you all today, I've been really thinking about this a lot and thinking about how much I just want to choose my presence in this life. And how little I've been choosing my presence, my real presence in this life over the last three years, I have just felt like floating off into space blob life. And I think this full moon is really bringing home to me. And it's like, I'm filming this obviously like over a week before it even happens. It's really bringing home to me that I have to choose to be here, like really choose it, not by default or anything like that. And it's really having me ask some of those deeper questions And I'm really excited because over on Patreon, I'm going to be doing our activation for this. So getting us in touch with that heart center, getting us in touch with that calm center and seeing what intentionally really wants to come forward. I'm going to be helping us through that, working with us a little deeper on that. So if you're looking for support, I'd love to see you there. And like I've mentioned, I have a few spaces left for the Magic Maker Circle, which is my higher tier, where we are going to be spending the month of February working with Saturn um, on our live calls together. So I would love to see you 
in any of those places. You can find me on my Instagram and my website as well as here. Um, and we're going to just keep having these conversations. I'm so excited about the future with you all and this year and deciding to be present and vibrant here. And I just can't wait to see where this takes us. Thank you so much for being here, my beautiful friends. I will see you for our next chat in the very near future. Have a beautiful week.